Hey guys, we recently unboxed this RX 7900 XT and it's finally time to show you our benchmarking results. In this review, I'll be comparing it to its predecessor RX 6900 XT and a somewhat competitor RTX 4080. The RX 7900 XT is priced at $800, which is significantly cheaper than the RTX 4080 priced at $1200. Even though the RX 7900 XT may not be as fast as RTX 4080, it is important to consider the trade-offs between performance and price. But before we get into the details, let's just say that the new AMD card is an option for somewhat budget-conscious high-end gamers who want solid performance without completely breaking the bank. If you're like me and want to keep this competition going, keep watching to learn more. For all the tests, we'll be using our AMD platform with Ryzen 7700X CPU, keeping all the components apart from the graphics cards the same. First, we'll do a deep dive in terms of raw performance, power efficiency and cooling. Then check out gaming benchmarks and answer the main question, should you consider getting RX 7900 XT? We'll include chapters so you can skip to a section most interesting to you. With this in mind, let's jump right into it. In 3D Mark Time Spike Stream Loop Test, we found that the new card hit 2.4GHz, which is about 400MHz higher than the last gen, but it's also 400MHz short from RTX 4080. To be fair though, clock speeds between different generations and especially different manufacturers cannot be compared like for like. What is interesting, temperature of RX 7900 XT is actually slightly lower and peaking at 61 degrees Celsius, and this is not because it has crazy fan profile either. It runs at 40.1 dBA with stock profile, which seems to be the trend with the recent graphics cards and is a nice improvement over 45 dBA on the 6900 XT. AMD has made some significant claims with this generation of up to 54% performance per watt improvement. In our tests, we compared 6900 XT and 7900 XT as well as RTX 4080 and honestly speaking, did not find that. I know AMD aimed at more of the XTX model, but let me show you what we found here. For this test, to isolate any graphics card software reporting issues, we plugged them all into NVIDIA p 2 and tracked the data multiple times per second. What we found was that RX 7900 XT on average was pulling more power than both of the other cards, which was a little boring, but that's just one variable. More power could also mean more performance, and yes, that is the case. But let's check the power graph over time first. Here you can see how much power these cards are pulling. While RX 7900 XT was advertised to have 300 watts typical board power, it will actually be released with 315 TBP. But as you can see here, it can pull way more than that. Our card peaked at 357 watts. On the other hand, 6900 XT peaked at 345 watts and RTX 4080 at 335 watts. And the kicker to the story is the performance per watt. Here we have about 24% improvement over 6900 XT, which is nice. But RTX 4080 actually has 19% performance per watt advantage over RX 7900 XT. This is important for the actual benchmarks that we'll go into shortly. The tool that I use for most game data logging currently does not support AMD Radeon telemetry data, which means I'm not able to provide performance per watt calculations on the fly from individual games. However, shout out to developers of CapFrameX for developing this tool. It saves me and many other people loads of time as well as improves data accuracy tremendously. With this in mind, let's jump into the game benchmarks. The new Radeon RX 7900 XT graphics card shows an average FPS improvement of 4% in Horizon Zero Dawn at 1440p compared to its predecessor, the 6900 XT. However, RTX 4080 performs 12% better on average FPS and 9% better on 1 percentiles. At 4K resolution, the 7900 XT has an average FPS improvement of 11.2% over 6900 XT and 9% on 1 percentiles while the RTX 4080 leads by 20% and 12% respectively. In Shadow of a Tomb Raider, the 7900 XT has a 16% improvement on average FPS at 1440p, but 9% decrease on 1 percentiles compared to the RX 6900 XT. The RTX 4080 leads by 27% on average FPS and 45% on the 1 percentiles at this resolution. At 4K, this card seems to perform a little bit better and has 19% lead over 6900 XT on average FPS and 3% on 1 percentiles. The difference here with RTX 4080 is exactly the same as 1440p. Next, we will have much lighter title, World War Z, where we wanted to test 1080p performance and see if it would be limited by the CPU. At first glance, both AMD cards perform the same, making me think that we are CPU limited. 
until we see RTX 4080 with 15% lead on average FPS and 13% lead on 1 percentiles. In 1440p, performance between these cards moves around and 7900 XT has 9% lead over last gen 6900 XT on average FPS and 7% lead on 1 percentiles. RTX 4080 has only 8% lead on average FPS and 9% on 1 percentiles. At 4K, we see 7900 XT leading by 9% over last gen card on average FPS and 18% on 1 percentiles, while RTX 4080 is taking 12% lead on average FPS and just 3% lead on 1 percentiles. In Borderlands 3, at 1080p, 7900 XT is leading by 17% over 6900 XT on average FPS and 5% on 1 percentiles. RTX 4080 here is 9% faster on average FPS and 13% faster on 1 percentiles. In 1440p, the lead from 7900 XT increases to 20% on average FPS and 9% on 1%. RTX 4080 is 9% faster on average FPS and 12% faster on 1%. In 4K, the gap between two AMD cards increases to 22% on average FPS and 15% on 1%. I'm starting to see a trend here. It seems that the new Infinity Cache that AMD put into these cards is really helping out with the higher resolution gaming. Here, RTX 4080 is only 7% faster on average FPS as well as 1%. Out. So far, I'm struggling to see massive performance improvements from last generation. For sure, in some places it is 15-20% to faster than 6900 XT. And to be frank, it is $100 cheaper than the launch price of the previous card, but I was expecting a bit more. AMD also did mention much improved RT performance. For this, we have two games starting with Formula 1 2022, and here with maxed out quality and ray tracing settings at 4K, we have 46% improvement over 6900 XT on average FPS and 35% improvement on 1%. RTX 4080 on the other hand has further 30% improvement on average FPS and 38% improved 1%. This places the new 7900 XT essentially at the RTX 3080 level, which is a full generation behind, and personally, I would say this game needs over 60 FPS to enjoy it, so I would recommend turning down the settings. The alternative to use DLSS or FSR to improve performance through some upscaling magic. In this game, we can enable FSR version 1, as well as DLSS 2 and 3, which includes frame generation. AMD did mention that the next generation FSR will support the frame generation as well, but since it's not available now, we can't really test it. In F1, with upscaling enabled, both AMD cards are now in good shape and 7900 XT has 30% lead in average FPS producing over 120 FPS, but only has 79 FPS from 1 percentiles. On the other hand, this is where Nvidia RTX cards shine. With DLSS 2 alone, RTX 4080 is 18% faster on average FPS and 28% faster on 1 percentiles. If we turn on frame generation, the lead grows to 36% on average FPS and a whopping 80% on the 1 percentiles. This is a very significant difference. Now let's check out the last game, Cyberpunk 2077, which is by far the heaviest RT game in our arsenal. Here without any upscaling, 7900 XT has 44% improvement over last generation on average FPS and 39% improvement on 1 percentiles. While that is a nice improvement, this game is still a slideshow regardless. Even RTX 4080 struggles here which has 80% higher average FPS and 98% higher 1 percentiles. We again see that the new AMD card has similar performance to the last gen RTX 3080. Turning up upscaling improves performance significantly, and 7900 XT now has 31% lead on average FPS over 6900 XT and 33% on 1%. On the other hand, RTX 4080 just with DLSS 2 has 69% improved on average FPS and 69% improvement on 1%. With these frame rates, I would say that this game is playable, but not truly good experience. Here I would say you either need to enable DLSS 3 or turn down your settings. Before we get to the conclusion, I have a few words to say about using these cards in production machines. As it stands right now, many of the tools either don't support it or are in early stages of development and don't have finished versions. For example, Blender now supports the new cards, but I struggle to get consistent results while running the tests. The other big one is AV1 encoding. We really wanted to compare it against Nvidia, but there are still very limited ways of doing so meaning that we'll need to wait for more software and more importantly streaming services to start supporting it before we can chime in. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it in the future. Now let's summarize this. The RX 7900 XT is a high-end graphics card that costs 800 USD. It delivers reasonable performance in games with average of 19% improvement over 6900 XT on all games and 13% improvement on the non-ray trace titles. 
While this card may not offer the level of performance that some people may have wanted at this price point, it does provide a decent performance uplift from last gen. In terms of value for money, the 7900 XT offers a reasonable amount of performance per dollar spent, but if you recently bought a 6900 XT, then I'd probably recommend against upgrading it. However, users looking for the best possible performance may want to consider other options, such as RTX 4080, which offers 23% better performance on all games and 14% better performance on non-ray trace titles, but then we're no longer talking about performance per dollar, as you get 23% better performance for 50% more money. If Nvidia dropped the price to $1,000, then I would say these cards would be very much even, and I would actually recommend 4080, as you get all that ray tracing performance, as well as much more supported creator features. I doubt they will drop the prices though. The more likely scenario will be releasing a card tier lower, like 4070, which will likely be around $900, and perform similarly to 7900 XT, but we'll have to wait and see. Let us know in the comments below on what you think about this launch and would you be picking up any of the new AMD Radeon cards. Also, if you want to check out any of the items covered in the video, the links are in the description below. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.